to Season 3, Episode 35 of One Man's Opinion. Today I am reviewing the new Broadway play, Jaja's African Hair Braiding by Jocelyn Biop, directed by Whitney White, running through November 5th at Manhattan Theatre Club's Samuel J. Friedman Theatre at 261 West 47th Street in New York City. Before we get into the review, I invite you to visit my Patreon page where you can support my channel for as little as $1 a month. I'll leave a link in the description. This is something that doesn't happen often, but on occasion it does, and frankly while writing this I can't immediately think of an example, so maybe not as often as I might. But Jaja's African Hair Braiding is a play where I really enjoyed it, and then the play reaches its climax and then ends, and I'm sitting there thinking, wow, why wasn't this what the show was the entire time? Set in 2019, back at the end of the Trump administration, when there was a lot of anti-immigrant sentiment going around, the play is set in the eponymous Jaja's African Hair Braiding in Harlem. The play, on the surface, is about the day in the life of a group of women at the establishment, uh, mostly run and operated by women who uh, had immigrated from Africa. Running the shop this day is Marie, played by Dominique Thorne, her mom, Jaja, played by Somi Kakoma, is preparing for her wedding that day, at Jaja's wedding, not Marie's, and so she's not in the shop, at least for the time being. Marie is not happy with her mom's marriage, not liking the man she's marrying. She is also questioning what she is going to do with her future, as she and her mom are immigrants, but since they aren't American citizens, have had to fudge some documentation for Marie when it came to her going to high school. Now, having graduated, Marie is unsure as to how she's going to go about going to college, as she has been going to high school under an assumed name. This may seem like what should be the primary or A plot, and I guess it really is, but it sits subtly underneath all the action that happens at the shop as the issues of the other characters carry on. The play takes place over about 12 hours while the shop is open, and we get an almost sitcom style of humor that carries throughout. There are some legitimate conflicts that happen between the characters, but they are mostly played for comedic effect. Jocelyn Bio has created some distinctly unique characters, from the stylist who thinks she knows better than everyone else, with the character of B, played by Zenzi Williams, to Ndidi, played by Meishi Aharanwa, who B feels is infringing on her customer base, which is actually kind of true, as one of the customers shows up thinking B isn't going to be there that day with the intention of seeing Ndidi. Then there is the pretentious businesswoman Vanessa, played by Lakeisha May, who comes in and won't let stylist Aminata, played by Nana Mensa, use any styling tools that aren't her own that she brought with her. Scenes like this carry on throughout the play, and they are enjoyable, right down to the quirky male characters, all played by Michael Oloyede, who comes in for a minute here or there in a very Kramer-esque way with his quick anecdotes and then departs. But it's the end that I love and hate at the same time. The play is about 90 minutes without an intermission, and near the end, it hits with a very poignant message about the abuses of capitalism in America upon immigrants. And then a significant event happens regarding Jaja and her wedding. Then the play ends, and I'm thinking, why is this the end? This should be the end of Act 1, with Act 2 following up the ramifications of what just happened. I'm a little annoyed because I want to detail what I'm talking about, but I'm not going to because it would spoil the play and I don't want to do that. If it was the finale of the first act with a second act following, I'd go into it. Now, 
being a white male who has never had a reason to go into an African hair braiding shop, I am not going to be able to express too much knowledge regarding hairstyles and uh, what's being done. But Nakia Mathis's hair and wig design is absolutely amazing. There's one character, Jennifer, played by Rachel Christopher, who comes in at the beginning of the day to get a micro braid and is there the entire day witnessing everything that goes on. She gives a fantastic performance who gives these little reactions to the drama that carries on throughout. It's not distracting from the action, but enough that it adds an extra bit of humor to the play. Anyway, throughout the entire play, Jennifer is getting her hair done. And I remember at the end of the show, this lady sitting next to me, seeing the finished product, something that would take over nine hours to do apparently, and said, how did they do that so fast? It was such an honest reaction and I loved it. Now, I know how it happened because I'm trained to notice these things, but wow, it is done so well, as well as the other designs that are done throughout the show. It's a situation where I wish there was a separate award for hair and makeup design for the Tony Awards because this deserves a nomination outside of combining it with costume design. Jaja's African Hair Braiding is an enjoyable show, and a show I would say if it wasn't for the ending, a delightful comedy with moments of subtext that address some serious issues. But with the ending the way it is, it made me want more and felt that we could have had an absolute contender for best play if Bio had maybe trimmed down the first act by 15 minutes and wrote a second act dealing with the conclusion of the first act. In the end, I think Jaja is an excellent comedy but it could have been so much more. But I am only one man's opinion, so be sure to leave yours in the comments below. If you'd like to see Jaja's African hair braiding, I'll leave a link in the description where you can get tickets. You can support my channel by becoming a patron on Patreon. I'll leave a link for that as well in the description. You can also support my channel by liking, sharing, and subscribing, and click the notification bell to be alerted to future reviews. My next review will be Sharon Playhouse's production of Lifespan of a Fact. Thank you for watching, and I will see you at the theater.